In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how you can build and sell AI agents in just the next few minutes. This is the perfect time to start because AI agents are just starting to get really powerful and there are quite literally millions of businesses out there who need to implement AI agents into their business. The only issue is at a glance, AI agents look super complex, but I promise you, as you're going to see in this video, they really aren't. Once you understand how AI agents actually work, you'll know exactly what resources to pull in to make it highly valuable for all your customers. So let's dive into the build. And after that, I'll show you how to package the AI agent and sell it to your customer. So I think we need to get the basics out of AI agents just so you know the anatomy, how they're technically structured. So that way, when you explain it to your customers, you're actually gonna know what you're talking about and how to actually apply everything that you need to. So first and foremost, we have a large language model. Think of this as nothing more than just a brain or the smartest person in a room and there's no windows, there's nothing. They have no connection to know exactly what is happening in this world. But you can ask them any question and they're gonna be able to tell you what they know. It's the smartest person you can ever think about. These are gonna be your typical open AI such as ChatGPT, Anthropic, which has Claude, and then they have their various models here. Then you have Twitter or XAI's Grok. And then you have Gemini, which is from Google, DeepSeek, Mistral. The key thing here is this is just essentially a brain. So if you were to think of it like a human, it's nothing more than a knowledge base upstairs in your noggin to know that you'll be able to communicate and have a conversation. Moving forward, we have basic LLMs plus a tool, which this is not technically an agent, but it gives external resources to the large language model for them to be able to pull in context around real world stuff. For example, if I brought up ChatGPT and I just enable web search, then I'll be able to say, search the internet for this, and then it'll be nothing more than if you Googled something to pull in context around what you're actually looking for. But this is nothing more than a large language model executing a tool. Therefore, it's not agentic, it's not an agent because an agent is actually doing something on your behalf, no different than a person would. This is like you having a laptop or a phone in your pocket to start Googling something. So very basic there of what that actually is. Then what we have here is AI agents plus tools. So the reason I put a mechanic on here is think of it like a mechanic, where if you have a conversation with your mechanic, such as a check engine light, you say, hey, what's wrong with my car? And they have their tools, they have their manual, they have everything they need in order to actually execute that job. And this is an agent basically doing that for whatever that use case might be. So you're asking them to do something. And this is gonna be largely what we're gonna be discussing here. So really, that's what it comes down to. And then not to get too complex here, but I think it's worth noting is we have AI agents plus MCP. MCP is also a connector, commonly known as just connections, like ChatGPT has connector. These are basically MCP servers, which is really an API wrapper. And that's why you have a toolbox right here, because it's essentially a toolbox of all these different tools that the AI agent can select from to be able to select the right one and do an action. This could be querying a database and updating a database. It could be querying things like instantly to see what your campaigns are like Copilot. It could be a number of different things to have access to a lot of different sources, no different than a mechanic with a toolbox, right? And then of course, as you scale up, you can have a team of agents and then you have multiple MCP servers. This could be your HubSpot, this could be the internet, it could be a number of different tools, basically a whole shop here of agents being able to perform fixes on cars. This is obviously metaphoric, but I think you get the point here. So let's go ahead and dive in and let's simply build an agent. I am just in N8N because N8N is a perfect platform for this to be able to think and prototype an agent and be able to execute it, actually deploy it. You can definitely charge for it, but obviously you can take it even further because there are ways you can actually take that structure and then apply full code if you want to take it. So it's literally the perfect middle spot for being able to quickly deploy an agent and have reliable systems all in one platform here. So we're just gonna hit here, we're gonna bring that up, we're gonna type in agent, and I'm just gonna bring up an agent right here, and this is gonna be no different, but we obviously have the anatomy right here. So we have two things, we have triggers and actions. So the trigger is gonna be a chat node. There are a number of different triggers that you can do, such as schedule trigger, or it could be time of day, it could be based on an application like a Slack bot or a Twilio, any outside resource that's going to be feeding information into your workflow. But for this case, we have chatbot, which we'll demonstrate here in a second. Okay, so think of it like a body. We have the body of an agent, but now he has no tools. They have no brain. They have no memory. We need to give it a brain first. So we're going to select that 
and we're just going to keep it simple and go open AI. We're going to go ahead and select our right credential there. And then we're just going to leave it to 4.1 mini. We have the basic stuff here. So I'm just going to open chat. I'm just going to say, hello, are you working? And it's probably going to respond saying, yes, I'm here. Great. Okay, cool. Here's the thing. It doesn't have memory. I would say, what is my name? It's not going to know that because there's no memory. I don't have access to personal information. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to give it memory. We're going to give it simple memory. And then we're going to reset the prompt here. And then we're going to say, hello, my name is Brandon. What is yours? I'm ChatGPT. I'm going to say, okay, ChatGPT, what is my name? And obviously it's going to return because I have memory now tied to it. Now the context window length, this is gonna be essentially working memory. When you tokenize and you process AI agents, they are in sequential tokenization. And so a context window is no different than if I were to tell you 30 minutes of information, how much of that information are you actually gonna retain? And are you gonna remember the first thing I said? So think of it like short-term memory. So obviously when you're designing these agents, you ideally wanna keep this as small as possible, but you don't want it to be way deep. So if you have a simple chat bot, it could be probably five to ten of the previous history because there's not really going to be anything important but that's something to consider obviously as you're building these out and then we have tools so there's a number of different tools in na10 that we'll be able to add but think of it like any api that we can call like Airtable, it can do Anthropic, Appify, we can do HubSpot. Think of it like a toolbox. There are just tons and tons. So I would say really when you're designing your AI agent and you want to design something that's going to be applicable to what they're using, make it common, make it simple, make it in such a way that is not overly complex. Now, when it comes to tools though, you want to be careful on selecting too many tools. Try not to give, for example, a five-year-old the whole toy store to just do whatever they want. You want to keep it very specific. You want it to be an expert at that one or two tools specifically. Select the right LLM for the size for the use case. So you don't want to ask a professor to start coloring with crayons. You wouldn't necessarily ask 4.1 mini to go solve the biggest ozone layer solution or something like that. All right, so this is basically a very simple AI agent that you can design for whatever your niche is. I would say start simple and then package it in such a way where you're gonna be able to provide value to customers. If I hit tool here, we have pre-built agents right here. We have voice assistant agent, email triage, we have knowledge store agent, calendar agent, task management agent, and a joke agent. Sometimes you can advertise to comedians, you just never know. So from here, I actually selected voice assistant agent and that's gonna be populated right here. It's simple, but it could be intimidating at first, but really everything is staged for you. So what you need to do is to connect your LLMs for the appropriate one that you wanna select. Again, this is like the brain. This one is called the embedding model and I'll explain that here in a second. But the overarching purpose of this particular workflow is again, we have the chat trigger and then we're gonna feed this into an AI agent. And you'll notice here we have system message and then the user message is gonna be based on what I feed into this chat. So what we wanna do is we are going to define the role of exactly what it is. And it already did it for us saying you are a data analysis agent that retrieves and analyzes information from a vector store to answer user questions. So that's the role. And then I talk about the task. You wanna give parameters around that task and exactly how to do that task. And then we're defining the output. Now, the output on this one is a little bit ambiguous, but that's okay because what we're doing here is we're using this to retrieve information. And so we don't necessarily know what the output is. The output is gonna be on the user, such as myself, to actually retrieve the right information for what I want. Sometimes I might want one word, sometimes I might want the whole paragraph. This is another section of it. And what this is doing is this is monitoring changes on a specific folder on Google Drive. So if you connect your Google Drive, all you would do is you'd be able to upload something like this. So if I just made a knowledge base or any folder such as SOPs, it could be pricing, could be onboarding, anything you could possibly imagine as documents to retrieve it. And then from there, it's actually gonna monitor it once I turn this workflow on, and then it's going to download it. This is a simple download from here. This is an automation. This is the agent. 
the automation monitors that folder and then it will pull into it. It will actually insert the docs. It's using this model right here to convert it to vector embeddings. These are all the vector embeddings right here. And then it's going to load it into a data loader, which is a vector database. Think of a vector database as like a three dimensional library for you to be able to pull information very quickly. And if I were to go in here and if I just said open chat, you could see right here, I'm saying, what information do you have accessible now? I currently have access to information according to Acme Plumbing Services. So what I did was I created a document and I just said, come up with information about plumbing services. Now you could pull this information from Google Maps and advertise this to plumbers. And believe me, I could tell you how you can do value-based pricing pretty quickly to articulate the value that these people need to have, especially for underserved industries like plumbing, HVAC, things like that. So we have standard stuff, regular duty hours, we have pricing structure, service menu, anything you could possibly want. This is very basic, but I think the proof of concept is pretty clear here. And if I were so much to say, what information do you have accessible? And if I were to expand this, you can see we have business information, pricing structure, residential pricing, We'll say here, okay, I have a customer that is wanting drain cleaning. What is that price? So you can see it went through the whole thing here and we have memory. So it's going to remember the previous few chats. However, we have it on here, which in this case, it's five. What it's doing is, is it's retrieving, embedding, and then tokenizing and converting back to human language. It'll easily say the price for drain cleaning through Acme ranges from 150 to 350. So why am I demonstrating this? Well, this is a simple agent because you can actually make a knowledge base where let's say a business owner has a SOP or documents or troubleshooting, anything like that for this simple use case right here. And think of it like if they had an employee where they're calling them saying, hey, what's this? Or what do I do about this? There could be specific equipment that they might use. There could be SOPs. There could be a lot of different, think of it like a knowledge base. And this is just one of literally millions of use cases. So what I would say is when you're designing an agent, if you start simple and then you do something like what's in the templates, as far as like any end library, or even use ChatGPT or Claude to say, hey, I have an agent or I want to design an agent. This is the business I own, or this is the industry that I'm going to be advertising to. What are some AI agents that I could do very easily, like customer service, order taking, inventory control. Try to quantify that by literally just take it down into one minute. If you did that 60 times, well, that's already an hour. It's pretty easy to articulate what something is worth for an hour's worth of time, such as if this was $150 for an hour, well, that's an hour saved and an hour gained in order to execute a job a lot more automated and streamlined for something as simple as this or saving a phone call. So you can quantify that be like, okay, so if an hour is worth your time and we're running these executions, you can easily quantify that. And you can start selling these workflows and AI agents, I'd say four or five figures usually. I would start with something like a proof of concept or even advertise it in such a way that say, hey, let's just try it. And then you give them the access to be able to use it. You want to test for edge cases. You want to monitor executions. Give them a complete package. So we have an agent now. I demonstrated for plumbers. This is an underserved industry where they probably, a lot of them don't know what ChatGPT is. So if we were to go into instantly and we just design a campaign, if I'm an agency and I want to reach out and then let's say I have a couple leads here, which these are plumbers. And then I just design a campaign saying AI hey, agent for plumbers. And if I were to say something like instantly greeting, which is a shortcut that I have basically to say, good morning, good afternoon. I have designed an AI agent specifically for plumbers like yourself, where you can save time in operational costs such as customer service orders and even knowledge base for you and your employees mind if i how it works and then we can do account signature and something like that keep it short sweet to the point there's no i hope your email finds you well then get on a demo call to say hey yes i did design an agent this is how it works there could be some areas here that i believe that could be improving for you and you just iterate 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 and then you'll be off to the races. Now, that was just a super brief overview, but if you wanna see someone actually sell something live and getting that first customer, you'll want to click right here because in that video, we do it all live. We go step by step 
all the way from deciding the service to coming up with the offer, writing the sales copy, everything and end up booking some calls and making some sales. And the best part is that you can just take everything from that video where we sell a service offer and just swap it over to sell AI agents. I'll see you over there.